Hi, my name is Tremor with Avon Tools, and right now we're looking at the software for our Mighty Cam Pro. Uh, this is also the software for our camera model number 26100-244. Um, the Mighty Cam Pro is 26100-258. Uh, the purpose of this video is to take a look at some of the basic features. Um, if you would like uh, you know, full in-depth instructions, we do have a manual on our website. Uh, you can also contact uh, our support team. You can call us at 734-973-0099, or you can go to aventools.com. That's A-V-E-N-T-O-O-L-S.com slash support. Uh, you can fill out a support case there, and then we can, we can send you a manual. All right, so let's take a look at this. All right, so starting off with calibration, uh, what you'll want to do is you want to have a ruler on screen or something of a known dimension so that, um, well, so that you know what the dimension is. And then you're gonna wanna name the, ca the calibration. Um, this one I'll be measuring millimeters, so I'll, I'll name it simply millimeters. Um, all right, and then we're going to draw. And that's going to ask us to draw a line and typically the longer the line, the more accurate the calibration. So I will grab, I can see four millimeters on screen, that's what I'll grab. And then I'll type four, I will set the units to millimeters, and then we're just gonna click apply. Okay, it says that we've had a success. And then here at the bottom we can see uh, we've got our calibration millimeters has been saved. I uh, saved a previous calibration in inches, so I can show you both. All right, so if I draw a line here, it's going to show me four millimeters, just like I calibrated. All right, now I can go to this calibration table, I could switch over to inches, and it'll automatically convert that line measurement into inches. All right. I can also measure now in inches from four to five, should be about one inch. And we get about one inch. The angles are slightly off. Okay, and just a reminder, these calibrations are for your set uh, working distance. Whatever working distance you were at when you calibrated is the working distance you uh, will need to be at in order for that to calibration to hold true. Um, so that might be what I'm seeing here as this, this line here is about 0.05 off of what we expect from our calibration. Um, you know, that just might be a slight difference in working distance as I was setting up this to, to record this video. Okay, if we want to delete a measurement off screen, we'll, we'll click this trash can icon and then click on the measurement and they disappear. Okay, if we want to delete a calibration, we say, oh, that, that inches calibration isn't working for me anymore. Um, make sure it's not the currently selected calibration and then just do a right click and delete it. You'll get a confirmation message, confirm, and you are done. Um, let's take a look at some other measurements here. And then I will also show you real quick. Um, we've got our autofocus camera connected. So I will go ahead and get this in focus using our little region of interest. Okay, that looks pretty good. Go back over to the measurement tab. All right, and we, we can measure circles from a center point, and we can measure from edge to edge, or we can do a three point measurement of a circle. Um, what I'm gonna show you with this part, because we have these two holes, is that we can do actually a distance uh, a center point distance between two circles. So I can measure roughly the uh, outer diameter of that circle, of that hole, and then this one. And there we have our distance 1.1 millimeters um, from each center point. Okay, and then real quickly, if we just wanna save this photo, all we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to capture and we are going to click this snapshot button. And we can see it's saved over here in the right hand corner. So what that means we can do is we can take the part off screen. 
we can delete our measurement off screen. And then we could pull this image up. Um, you can load an image from somewhere on your computer. You can save this to a specific destination. You can also change the default destination by going on the Capture tab to File Save. Uh, so yep, the file name uh, is currently going to be uh, TS. I'm not sure where that comes from. And then it's, it's uh, appending the date. Um, and there's different uh, formats for the date as well. Year, month, day, hour, minute, second. That's what that stands for. OK, uh, JPEG, TIF, PNG, uh, got all these different formats. And then, of course, the, uh, the path. The default path is probably the main uh, variable that you'll be concerned with. All right, um, there's a bunch of other measurement features here. Um, if I were to choose something like, like this, um, this is going to this is going to measure a line, but in segments. Uh, so a straight line in segments. All right, and so we'll click, and then we'll just keep clicking uh, for each line segment, and it'll show us the distance between each segment. And then we w once we get to the last uh, segment, we want to do a double click to end the measurement. Um, that's very similar to, say, this jagged line, um, where it's more freeform. It doesn't necessarily have to be one straight line. Um, and then that'll actually give you a measurement of the, the line as a whole uh, with all these segments added together. It's a different tool. Um, and then, like I said, a lot of these are very similar. I'm just going to click another one to show you. This one, uh, so we have a, right, this is the one that measures, it's going to measure the distance between two parallel lines or, or objects. Um, and you can continue to do this, just like the other one. You can continue to measure between parallel lines. Or uh, just, um, and this works for all the, the tools that I showed you, if you do a right click, it's actually going to cancel that, so you can start over. Um, of course, you can you can end it on a double click, and you can delete it as well, but just a little tidbit. Um, you can also add text boxes. So yep, to add a text box, you're just going to click and then start typing whatever your text is. Um, so the next thing I suppose I'll show you, let's type something legible in here. Let's type defect. OK, and you can't see it very well because right now the part is on screen is blue and our text is green. So we can actually change the color of the text. We can change the color of the, the lines as well. Uh, so maybe I want to change that to a darker blue. Maybe I want the text to be red. And that's, that makes it a bit more legible. Um, this, this holds uh, for measurements as well. Okay, So this graphics property is now going to be changed. Do red. Uh, and then we could do yellow. All right. Oops. All right. OK. And you can use the whole, um, sorry, you can move the whole entity, or you can just move this text. So if I wanted to move this text location to you know, somewhere else on the, on the image, I could do that as well. All right, and that's uh, that's just using this cursor tool. All right, a couple of other uh, features on this pane I'll show you. So uh, we have class counting. So um, you know you might have something on the screen and you want to mark objects as pass or fail. That's just one example of using this class counting feature. So if I mark this, 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 say. 
um, and then I can change the class name. I can change this to fail. I can change this to pass. And then I can mark, you know, whatever passes. Okay, and then uh, uh, you can see at the bottom here we've got a we've got statistics that shows us the number or the percent of, of passes versus fails. So that's a good feature. Let's clear all that. All right, and uh, then we've got stuff like a ruler, and this ruler, the units. I know it's kind of hard to read, but the, the units are uh, set to whatever my calibration is currently set to. So if I change here to the default, it's just going to be in pixels. And then uh, it's a definition per tick mark. So this is uh, each tick mark is 10 pixels. Or if I switch over to millimeters, it's showing me each tick mark is 0 0.028 millimeters. All right. Uh, then we also have a grid property. You know, we could show... Um, you, know, you can change the number of rows or columns. Maybe you want a hundred. You can change the color of the grid. Green. So there's a lot you can do with this. All right. Um, let's move on to. Let's move on to another. Uh, Part of the software here. I've already shown you how to save an image, um, you know, and then of course you can load an image. All right. Um, within the capture tab, this is where you save the image again. You can adjust resolution. You can adjust exposure, white balance. You've got saturation, contrast, sharpness, all the typical features you see with a camera. And then some, maybe some you wouldn't see, like histogram. We've got um, you can set different levels of RGB. We have features like live image stitching and extended depth of field, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, you can record videos. You can set up a delay capture, so you can capture an image every 10 seconds for however much amount of time. If you know, you're, you know, maybe you have a microscope set up to look at uh, culture samples and, or, or, you know, cells. And you want to see how they uh, grow over time. So that'd be a good one for that. Um, uh, this is just your autofocus feature. Uh, so the software, if I haven't mentioned, it's compatible with the 26100-244 Mighty Cam. Uh, it's also compatible with the 26100-258 MightyCam Pro. Uh, the Pro is what I have connected now, and that's why we're able to use the autofocus. The MightyCam uh, standalone is uh, does not have an autofocus feature, so you, you won't be able to access this pane. So uh, if we're dealing with an image after the fact, um, we've got these different options. We can set a die over the image for... Um, so th this software really covers a wide array of applications. Um, most people are not going to use stuff like this, but um, I'll just show you it's here. All right, so let's cancel out of that. Um, again, so after you take an image, you can still edit contrast, saturation, sharpness, stuff like that. There's binarization. Um, again, histogram with your RGB colors. Okay, so as promised, I'm going to briefly show you guys image stitching as well as EDF or what is known as extended depth of field. Um, these, are, these are tasks that can be performed in a live setting or with a still image. Um, so meaning this video on screen right now is live. And what we can do is we're just going to go ahead and uh, let's go with high let's go with high speed to start and then we can start stitching and see what that looks like so you know even though it says high speed we're going to want to move this relatively slowly to start stitching an image so as i move it on screen you can see it'll start to grab additional sections 
and add those to the image. So this is live image stitching. We'll go ahead and stop stitching for now. And then that image that we stitched, um, it's, it's been created now as, it's, as one, one image. It's saved in a folder. And we could now make measurements on this image. Um, of course, you're going to get a better result if you just use still images. And that process is similar. Uh, you would just go here. We're already on the image tab, so that would be under advanced computational imaging. You would select image stitching, and then you would um, you would select the photos, however many there are, that you want to stitch together. And once you select all of those, hit apply, and you'll get a new image. Um, I'll have a video demonstration of that for extended depth of field. Um, which we will, I think we're going to include that in this video. Um, let's head back over to live and then I'll show you what the live EDF looks like. So I've picked this board specifically because it has uh, parts of uh, varying heights. Some of these parts are um, you know, less than a quarter of an inch all the way up to uh, maybe an inch. So um, we're just going to go over here to EDF Live. And again, we've got our, uh, you know, our quality settings. So um, you know, we'll, I guess we'll stick with high quality. That just means we can't move as quickly. And we're about focused here on that bottom section. I think that's maybe we'll move past the bottom a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and start. And that pretty much wraps it up for the software. Uh, if you want more in-depth, again, you can look at the, the software manual. You can contact us uh, by phone, or you can contact us online at uh, aventools.com support, and we can send you a software manual. Thank you for your time. So just like um, with our imaging software, this camera, the 26100-258 Mighty Cam Pro, has integrated software. Um, and this is something that you can use in HDMI mode when you're not connected to a PC. So um, what we have right now on screen is, is that camera set up. And then if you move the cursor to the left, you'll see, uh, you'll see your general settings. And then you'll also see the image capture button. And then on the right hand side is where we will see the measurement functions. So before you measure, you have to calibrate. You can find the calibration tool on the right hand side here. It's the first option at the top. You click that. And the first thing it asks is that you draw a line for your calibration. And the longer the line, the more accurate the calibration. So I'm going to pick this line. And then I'm going to define the line now. And I know that line is uh, one and a quarter inches. So I'm going to enter that information now. See 1.25 and then set the uh, units to inches. I'm also going to name it. I'll just simply name it inches for now. And then you can also set the magnification value. So you can have multiple saved uh, calibrations at different magnifications. And you can return to those. Um, so then once you have all your parameters set, you're just going to click Start Measurement. And now it gives you the instruction right-click to start measuring. So you, you actually have access to this menu from the very beginning. You could just do a right-click, and this menu would come up with all these different measurement functions. And then you can also see here under uh, Set Scale, if you had multiple scales saved, this would open up a menu where you could choose a previously saved uh, calibration. Uh, scale is synonymous in that sense. So let's just draw an arbitrary line 
and see that our calibration is holding. So we can see it's pretty accurate here from the 17 to the 18 mark, we are showing one inch. These are also customizable, like in the, in the software on the PC, you can go and you can change the line width, you can change the color, uh, you can change the font color, and then those changes will take hold the next time you draw a measurement. I'm going to change that back. That doesn't look so good. Okay, let's put something else under here. When I click, uh, if you wanted to save an image, so I'll click off of this real quick. If you wanted to save an image, you just go over to this left-hand side and you click the snapshot button. And that snapshot button would save the image uh, with the measurements on the screen. Um, but I'm going to do a right click. I'm going to click exit for now, and that's going to erase the measurements off the screen. And then we're going to put something a little bit more interesting on here. And I can show you a few of these other tools. So what we have here is a bunch of similar parts um, that are intended to be equal distant from each other. So I can use something like this parallel line tool. And I can click. And I can draw. And it'll show me the distance between those lines. And I can continue doing that until I have all of my measurements on screen and then, or I can even switch to a different measurement tool like a circle. And there's different ways to draw a circle. Just like there was with the other software. And you can see here, uh, this is showing radius, parameter, and area. If I go to, uh, where is it? Yes, so under circle where I chose how to draw the circle, just below that, uh, you can select what, what details are displayed on that, that measurement. So that's a bunch of the measurement tools. Um, again, saving an image is used just with that snapshot button. It saves directly to an SD card. Um, that's all I had to show you with this software. There's, you can flip the image horizontally, vertically. There's also a, manual, or a digital zoom function here, um, as, as well as so you can use image playback. You can see the, the last image that you took. Um, I don't have an SD card installed to show you that right now. But then there's also compare. So it, that would take the last saved image, and it would compare it to the live image um, in a side-by-side -side kind of view. Uh, and then we have a simple cross here. We can put, hold on, let me turn off this autofocus real quick. So a cross line is going to, yes, yeah, so we can kind of set up a grid this way if we wanted a grid on screen. And then there's your basic ruler, which again is going to correspond to whatever the, the currently set calibration is. And that's it for the integrated software. Um, there, are, there are not the additional features that you'll see on a PC like extended depth of field or uh, advanced image stitching um, along those lines, but your basic tools are there. So thank you again for your time.